first, before uh, demoing you what we have done for uh, during this spin for the batches, I'm going to show you how batches are now because sometimes we don't have we we are not that familiar. Uh, right now, there was a restriction for the batches that you can't uh, have uh, the same batch with the same name in the whole site model. So, for instance, here you can see that I have one batch called another batch, and then uh, let me. I, it's, it happens the same if I try to create or to edit. Let me edit this batch, for instance, which is called one more batch. Uh, if I try to edit this batch and use the same name that we have seen before that have there, so for instance, another batch, and I save changes, what happened now is that I can't save that batch because the batches should be unique along the model side. That's that issue had a lot of, lot of complaints because when you copy a course, you can have the same batch, and that's our yeah, like we, we can get why teachers were complaining about that and why this issue had a lot of votes. And apart from that, there were there was also a restriction. Uh, when you were trying, uh, I'm going to show you for the backup and then uh, during the demo, I'm still in a in a Moodle site without the patches, without what we have been doing. And when you are in a site and you try to create a backup of a course, uh, it, when you disable, when you remove the enrolled users, you can see, I, I, I hope that you can read the screen. Let me zoom in in case you need it. And when I uh, disable the checkbox, uh, batches uh, are disabled too, or, and the same happens in my if I disable activities. So when I uncheck the activities, no batches are included. That was causing so, some problems. For instance, when we you, you were copying a course without the users or the or the enrollments because uh, the, the the batches were not copied there, and it was like okay, teachers were complaining that they need needed to again create the batches and go, so on. So what we have done is to uh, work on these uh, two separate issues and uh, work on an improvement. Uh, I've created this uh, prototype site. I'm going to share the link here in case you want. I know I, I will share you later because now I have a, a, another bad copy, but I will show you later. Uh, we have created this prototype site for you to play. Anybody can play with this. There are a few user, users and uh, passwords. Uh, so, yeah, you can. Uh, access to this course. I think this course was created by Mary for the last version. So thanks, Mary, for that. I don't. I hope you don't mind that we copy this because it's nice. Uh, so but yeah, when I access to the batches of this course, I can see a couple of batches here. Uh, one is public and the other one is not. You can see here it's available and the other one is not available. Uh, they have different criteria, etc. So now, if I go go for instance, uh, and I try to yeah, let me. Uh, but let me first of all uh, try to uh, create a copy of this course. Uh, I'm going to copy this course, and I'm not going to include the data. I'm going to put demo, demo. Yes, let me put a different date, and I'm not going to include the user data nor the any uh, role in, uh, enrollment because yeah, I only want the the course uh, content, and then. And now it's doing the copy thing. And once the, the copy is done and I access to the course, I will see that the, 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 the batches should be there. If you try to do this, exactly this, in a, in a Moodle site without the batches, you will see that the, no batches were copied before. So now I have the, the demo course that I just copied. I go to the batches section. I go to manage section. So as you can see, mm, both are, are an available that's expected because by default uh, when you create content they should be disabled in case teachers want to change anything but at least the patches are here and the teachers can only enable them them in case they want to enable so that's uh, perfect uh, now as we have removed uh, this restriction that we had with users and and also with activities for the batches, I can also import batches from a different course. Let me, it's, I know that in that case it's kind of, yeah, it's not useful, but uh, let me go to the course they use and import uh, a couple of uh, this, these same batches from, from the, the same course, this one. I'm only go to import batches. I'm going to disable the rest of the content. That was not possible before because remember, uh, every time that I was, I disable uh, users or, or activities. I can't, I, I couldn't uh, uh, import batches. But in that case, now, from now on, I will be able to just import batches. So now 
when I go to the batches, I will find twice. I know that's why I know that it's kind of silly, this example, but yeah, if I uh, go to man manage batches, you can see yeah, them repeated. So yeah. And if I try to edit any of these batches, for instance, let me yeah uh, edit this one and I try to save changes without ch uh, doing any change. Remember that we have all, uh, another byte called early chooser. If I try to save changes, the system if, uh, is going to let me save these changes because yeah, now we allow uh, having repeated uh, batches. So that's perfect. And what we have also done, it's like before uh, when you, I'm going back to the, yeah, to the uh, previous model side. I don't know if you remember when you want to enable any batch, uh, let me, for instance, this one. If I want to enable the access, I have a model. This is the model. This is not, not a real model because we are redirected to a different page and yeah, we are kind of simulating what a model does. Uh, but we, what we have now, when I try to enable any of these patches, for instance, this one, we have now a real model. So yeah, the user experience is nicer. You, don't, you are not redirected to a different page and in case they want to enable, they got they have a nicer message because Julia was helping me to yeah, improve also these messages. Uh, so yeah, so that's some of the changes that we have done. I think there are some questions or, yeah, there are some questions or? Uh, the names are not duplicated, no. It's like, well, it's like they, they can be duplicated. You, you can have as many batches as you want and they can have exactly the same name. We start working on a different approach. We were not allowing uh, batches to have the same name in a course, but then last week we were uh, showing with uh, uh, Tubret and uh, he raised an interesting topic because there might be some MOOCs, for instance, with the same batch, but different cohorts of different criteria. So at the end, we decided that it was better to just to yeah, remove that restriction everywhere along the Moodle site and let teachers to have duplicated batches in case they want. As you know, a few versions ago, we updated the Fontausom library from uh, the version 4 to the version uh, 6. Sabina has been working on the icons, and as you can see on the right, uh, you can see the old version, so what we have until now. On the uh, left side of the screen, you can see uh, the new icons that uh, Sabina has been working on, reviewing all them one by one during her project week. There are a lot of icons, and uh, he, she tried to uh, replace some of them uh, to take advantage of the uh, the new font awesome icons that we have the, in the sixth version in the version six uh, we also updated the svg icons because as you can see if you compare what we have in on right and what, what we have on the left uh, some of them were kind of uh, ugly or old mm -hmm. so yeah we are taking advantage of these new icons and we have also upgraded the svg icons and we have also removed all the, uh, the redundant PNG or GIF or G G yeah, all the icons that are redundant because they had the SVG. So we are removing around by 500 uh, files from Moodle, which is also uh, something nice to, to, to do. Uh, yeah. It's, as you can see, the icons are different. I'm going to show you a couple of screens for you to see. Remember, on the right, you can see the old version of the icons on, on the left. Uh, this is the, the new version. Uh, here you can see, you can compare the auto. I know that this is going to be removed, but it's one of the easiest way uh, places to see the differences. Uh, we have replaced uh, this arrow by this uh, chevron. Uh, yeah, some of the icons are more intuitive, more easy to see, but to understand, they are more, more look more modern. So yeah, uh, same for the files uh, to add files, uh, or even to yeah for the for the icons organization to display. Uh, I love this one because I think it's easier to see that it's going to be displayed as a hierarchy instead of this one, which was kind of weird. And for the user tools, yeah, it's an also a random example. Uh, here you can see all the icons. Yeah, they some of them have been uh, uh, updated too, but yeah, uh, we have also removed these legacy icons uh, to yeah put some more found out some icons. Uh, this is still a, a work in progress. I have a meeting uh, with Sabina after this meeting to, to check a few things that uh, like this one, but the, uh, the more I, it's like we, we have updated these icons. Some, most of the PNGs files uh, have been removed and uh, ex except the ones that they need still to be there. Uh, so be warned. And if you are creating new icons from now on, you only need to give the SVG uh, for them. And yeah, uh, that's 
uh, all uh, my side uh, over to you, Miguel. <laughs> 